Got it. All right, we should be live in the Facebook. Cassie, don't look at the phone. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, let's get cameras on. Jennifer, Derek, Jillian. All right, Thomas. Oh, Karen's, don't look at the phone. Don't, I said, don't look at the phone. You guys are crazy. Jeff, camera's on. Joni. All right, let's uh, let's start positive focus. Well, let's start thinking about positive focus. We're still a minute early. I guess I'm never used to being two minutes early to anything. So that's not great. <clears throat> All right. Stacy Peterson's here. She's going to participate today too, and she doesn't even know it. Oh, she can't hear me because otherwise she would smile at least. Give me something. Nope, Stacy's not even listening. Not listening yet. Brad is here. Awesome. Caleb is here. Ready to go. Stacy, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I said you're going to participate participate today and you didn't even know it. And I didn't even get a smile out of you. So uh, you, you yeah, probably, your yeah. audio probably hadn't hooked up yet. No, <laughs> it hadn't. <laughs> All right, so let's start with a positive. We're still early, 11.59. Am I always this late to everything where if I come two minutes early, it feels like forever? Probably. All right, we got some otter pilots in here. That's amazing. Let's just send AI on like listing appointments. It's good. It's good. Taking over the world. We are going to use AI today. So that'll be fun. That will be fun. We'll see what um, I'll get my chat open here all right positive focus so everyone has to do a positive focus want to hear one good thing production related last seven days go in the chat and let's see i'm ready all right what do you got kathy so I've got this uh, buyer that was referred to me. He's actually a commercial realtor in California, and he was referred to me because he wants to build a lake view house. And he already had a piece of property that fell apart. And anyway, so I couldn't find anything that met his specific needs. So I put it out on a bunch of Facebook pages. And I always do a picture whenever I do a post. <laughs> of something and I did a needle in a haystack because that's basically what this was. So I always go online, look for my unique picture because I do know that on social media, if you just do words, people don't see it. But if you have an, a unique picture, it gets their attention. So I got a text last night from um, a waterfront uh, agent and they said, hey, I think I got the special lot. And when I saw it, I go, mm, I think you do. And you got the special price, which is great because the guy's going to build and it's going to be a million dollar house. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's amazing. That's a good one. And it bleeds right into our topic for today. So um, you're definitely going to chime in when we get into the mastermind portion of today. All right, positive focus. I've only got one. I've got Kathy and Derek, but there's more than just two people on this call today. All right. Positive focus. My offer for my first rental property was accepted. Amazing. Derek says, unable to turn on camera right now. Bad hair day. Positive focus. The VP of marketing for eXp Realty sent me a referral that's a family member of hers in the area. 2.5 times my area's average price point. Dude, that's amazing. Picked up two buyers in the past week. Sue, legit. Joe, uh, Joe's is an, uh, an estate's executor who I've been nurturing for three months called to tell me that he's ready to list his property. Awesome. 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 Amy, I sent a recruiting email to Remax Realtors and received an offer on my listing today. Um, that seems like a roundabout way to get an offer on a listing. Maybe I misunderstood that. Um, but it's awesome. Nonetheless, if you got an offer, good work. All right. As you guys are flowing in here, cameras on. Today is our social media mastermind and i'm gonna take I had one last week i'll share let's hear it yeah i had a listening appointment last week i knew i was competing uh, i thought it went pretty well connected well with the client and then yesterday we talked again to follow up uh, he said the other guys offered to discount and was curious what i thought about that um, and i kind of stood my ground a little bit and offered more in marketing um saying hey let's do this different i'd rather do it this way and offer a little bit more in marketing than, than discount he said okay sounds good let's do it so i got the listing so super pumped awesome 
That's really, really good. Uh, another good one for that. Like, can you imagine if he's willing or she's willing to like negotiate their commission, how much money they're going to give away when they negotiate the offer on your house? Like eek, I would never go down that path. And then they'll be like, holy cow, you're right. You're right. Yeah, That's good call. Really good. Yeah, sometimes, you know, in those uncomfortable situations, because they're uncomfortable, you just got to be willing to to go through one sort of like discomfort, right? Because they may fall after one like, well, that's a ridiculous idea. Like I use most of it for marketing anyway. And if the agent's discounting, there's no chance of doing marketing. And that may get like 80% of them, but some agents are just like, I'll totally do it for 4%. You know, like they just drop their pants right on the spot. So just being willing to enter into that sort of level of discomfort is really, really good. Um, all right. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, two separate things. Okay. That's why I was like, Amy, what are you, what are you doing? You're, you're sending recruiting emails and getting listing offers. That's amazing. Like uh, two birds, one stone. Uh, Jennifer said, just negotiated uh, for buyer 25K under list and seller accepted. That's amazing which is comforting that the market's like less crazy. Um, things are definitely loosening up in a good way. I see across most markets. Jillian says, first property under contract. Shout out to my mentor, Chris Mullenberg and team. That is awesome. That's a win on top of a win, a double win. Uh, Chris is going to uh, participate today. I already know that. Stacy told me so. She threw you under the bus yesterday for this uh, for this training. So that's good. Uh, Mark says, set meetings with an estate attorney and divorce attorney who are both promising me steady business. That's amazing. Mark, you want to um, unmute yourself and give us a little bit more on that? Uh, yeah, that was just uh, when I wrote down my goals for 2024, it was to uh, build out those pillars of business. Um, so, yeah, I said, and actually one of them came from social media posts that I have been posting. He uh, He actually friended me. And we knew some of the same people and uh, just set meetings with both of them. So um, I just went through a recent uh, estate planning uh, with somebody. And, um, you know, I saw that one of the people that I was involved with was getting a lot of business from an estate attorney. So uh, that's why I chased those two sources of business. I think I think each one of them would be good for it could be 10 or 15 deals each per year. Yeah, I mean, so they're, any... they're overflowing with business. Yeah. Any, um, tactical, I mean, we may even do, if you, if you crush it and we may even do a session on it. Um, but any tactical like advice there are these folks that you knew, well, one, you said you connected through social media, but, uh, did you have existing relationships or were these cold calls? Uh, the one, well, the estate attorney was because they saw uh, a couple of posts that I had done about <clears throat> estate planning and, um, that I have a system in place for helping people moving through the estate process. Uh, a, a loved one passes away. A lot of times people don't know what to do with all their stuff. Uh, so I do have a full list of vendors, movers, uh, clean out people, cleaning people to clean the, the home, uh, you know, dumpsters, everything. I can give people discounts on everything. So um, the fact that I can handle things from start to finish on an estate, which guys, it's extremely easy. You could set those systems up in a half hour you know, just contact the right people and have them in your back pocket. But that's what he was excited that he could turn people on to me. And then I would walk them, hold their hand through the entire process. Awesome. And is it on your personal or your business that you posted that? Um... Uh, that was actually a YouTube video. So um, I know we're editing some stuff right now. I have an editor redoing some stuff, um, putting captions and things like that. So it might be pulled down, but I'll make sure it's back up. Awesome. 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 Yeah. I'm just going through your Facebook and reading some stuff. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, who else has a win? Let me see. Eric, we met a big group of people uh, we know through social media market uh, groups at a fundraiser last Sunday. One person there uh, asked us for an outbound referral yesterday. Amazing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm still going to put them on the spot, Jessica. No worries. <clears throat> Yeah, so the way we're going to run today's call, I, I'm going to I'm going to run it in sort of three distinct segments. So we're going to cover uh, social media collectively. I promise there are strategies that y'all are using that would generate business way more consistently if you were more consistent doing it. So I'm going to open it up. I'm going to I'm going to share a few examples of people that are running legit social media um, 
people that I know have great businesses that we can just sort of R&D from what they're doing, or at least be inspired. R&D is rip off and duplicate, but be inspired by what they're doing on social media. I'm old, so it's going to be Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, you can modify all these strategies for Instagram. I don't get Instagram. It hurts my it hurts my head for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and I think that the, the demos are probably different on either of them. Um, you may use Instagram for personal, but you may have like 60 year old, you know, trade down or empty nesters that are are living on Facebook. So you may you may have a different approach depending on which which uh, segment of the market you want to go after. Um, all right. Yeah. So we'd love to see a session on that. Yeah. I like that too. So Mark, go out and uh, sell 20 homes from those two relationships in the next six months. And then we'll have you come on and teach it to us. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't want to go too down far that down that rabbit hole. Um, but Mark, if you can, yeah, Mark, why don't you share w w that post or anything you can share on that? Um, I I'd like Mark to prove it first. Um, and then we'll, then we'll swipe it. So we can come on and say like, yep, guys, on, you know, February, whatever, 13th, I mentioned this and, you know, I just had my seventh closing in, you know, 120 days. And this is what it looked like. That's the power of this mastermind is that we only are ever going to bring on people, you know, that are doing something that works. Um, so even in the mastermind today, I want to make sure that, you know, as you share, it's led to like a piece of business. And if I could only do it every day or multiple times a day. Just think of how much business it, it could lead to. Uh, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy made a good point. You can just, you can just, oh, who, who's there? Karen. All right. Where are you? I'm right oh, there you are. I'm okay. driving. Yeah. Go ahead. So um, I'm a huge giver. I love to give stuff out. I've been like this my whole life. So I'm like one of those kind of pop by type of people, but um, I I did a couple of things this week. So Sunday was football day, and so I made a taco dip early, early in the morning, and I dropped it off at four of my clients with a bunch of business cards, and I used AI to kind of make a cute little football rhyme, um, basically because they're having a bunch of people over and. I wanted them to talk about me because I've all helped them, you know? And then, um, so I did that. And then I go to the same nail salon all the time. And so because it's Valentine's week, I made little gift bags for all of them. And the owner came by and I've been in contact with her for a while, um, but she came by and she told me that um, she, um, got pre-approved and she wants to buy a waterfront property in Virginia Beach. So she asked me to set her up with a search. So I don't know. I, I just, I seem to get people just by, you know, continually giving. Yeah, that's awesome. I I, I love that. And the, the, we, we, it was on the lead conversion call. We had a, a, a powerhouse agent share, you know, that she, she, almost was paralyzed when friends of hers were talking about real estate. She can go out and, and, you know, talk to expireds and, you know, knock on $5 million expired door, like knock on the front door. But then when it comes to like asking, like you're someone that actually knows you that you're going to see on a regular basis, she's just paralyzed. So coming from a place of contribution, you know, and what if you could only get business from businesses that you frequented? You know, like how would you treat those businesses differently? You'd probably refer a ton of business to them, you know, and you'd ask them, hey, do you have any coupons that I can give out? You know, and by giving in that way, I bet you'd get a ridiculous amount of business, right? So not social media at all, but that would definitely work. It would probably take like maybe 10 businesses in your market that you just go all in on be helping them be successful. And you'd probably sell at least 20 additional homes by just doing that over the course of a year, maybe 10 at worst case. So really, really good. Um, but it's just like anything, we can only do so much and you got to do it consistently. So let's open up. Um, I want to, 
let me just kind of rant a, a little bit before we get into the mastermind part um, about about social media and, and how I want, I really want this to be intentional. And if you guys can turn on your cameras, I, I want to get at least one screen. We've got 87 on here and we don't have a full screen of faces. So if you guys can turn your cameras on, that'd be awesome. Um, social media is a dangerous tool. So it could... Uh, it could definitely lead to business. So we want to talk today about how we use social media to lead to business. Uh, some of us, myself included, mostly YouTube rabbit holes that I go down, but I could I could rationalize in my head that I'm learning about this thing, but then like I'll spend two and a half hours on YouTube in a day. And it's like, really, did I need to, you know, spend that much time to learn, you know, and we kind of just get caught up in, in in doing the the thing that no, the platform wants here. us to do, I mean, it wasn't here. Uh, doing the thing that the platform wants us to do. So, the word of caution in all of this is that if your business isn't where you want it to be, and you're going to start using social media more more actively and more consistently, make sure you're not going down the rabbit hole of doing the thing that you know you're mindlessly scrolling. We don't want that to be the thing that you do on social media. You're getting in, you're intentional about the, what you're going to use the platform for, and then you're getting out of the platform. Unless you're going to do the, you know, research what other folks are doing on social media. And I'll go through some of the, some of the folks here that, that I know run big businesses and they're generating business from social media. I do think a little bit of research every day on what others are doing is really, really helpful. So we'll start with that. Uh, then I'm going to open it up. I'm going to show like five Facebook pages and, and what I think is, is good about them. Then I'm going to open it up and we're just going to share specifically if you've done something that has created a deal. So I did this, even if you did it one time. And you're, but you think, man, if I did this, come to think of it, if I did this more often, it probably could generate more business on social media. I want to be able to capture all of those tactics and, and things that you could do on a consistent basis to generate business um, from social media. Then I'm going to give you all a challenge. I'm going to go through, I think everyone uh, needs to use, use video more in their, um, in their business. So I'm going to give you a 31 day challenge. I had, I don't know if uh, he's on here right now, but one of our uh, Rebs members um, just reached out to me and this was a while ago, we, we gave the challenge. I forget what intensive it was, um, but we did a 31 day challenge where they had to start that day and everyone committed to it. Um, and even off that first Facebook Live, a couple of people you know, got appointments right, right there on the spot. Um, listing appointments or, you know, got a, a, a lead on a buyer or whatnot. So we'll go through that and I'll go through some of the context on, on why video is important. Uh, and then hopefully all of you will take the challenge. So um, let me just start with uh, and start thinking about um, tactics that you've used on social media that has generated business. And I'm just going to share my screen and I'll roll through a few folks and there will be a squirrel here or there. Um, Kathy has already introduced one squirrel that I don't know about. I have not vetted myself, so I'll have to trust Kathy Burns on this one. Um, Kathy is like the most advanced technologist when it comes to this stuff. And, uh, and I just love it. All right. So, um, let me pull up some, some pages here. So a few of these are just clients of a B school that have built, you know, big businesses. They weren't always big businesses. I'm just like, I know that just it's inspiring to look at their stuff and not maybe swipe it, but just say like, okay, maybe I could do that. Most of these have gone down this path of like doing a show. It's the big thing with, with teams right now. Not everybody needs to think that they need to do like get on TV, you know? So I, I don't want that to be the takeaway because that was just really in the last six, six, seven months or so. So Tara Lindbergh runs an awesome business. I've always loved her look and feel. Um, you know, so I, I want, it may not be the five or six that I bring up, but I think all of you should pick five or six agents that are maybe a few steps ahead of you on social or video and get inspired by the stuff that they're putting out, right? 
And I don't know how you do this one here, but I think it's super cool, you know? So I would never have thought of that point of view. Your, your Limbird agent coming in to get you the best deal, right? So, you know, VAs can put this stuff together in, in no time. And Stacey, I may get your, your input on how you use your VA. Cause I know you're, you're, and maybe even you Mark on your VA, um, stuff that is like, this is almost, um, you know, keeping current matters like, so I suspect, you know, if you don't have an account to keep in current matters, you can certainly use our, our monthly post, but if you go into KCM, they've got just a bunch of good stuff. You don't want to go crazy with it. Even just the infographics, you know, they have, there's no foreclosure wave in sight, right? So posting one or two infographics from KCM and putting your own take on it would be massively powerful. And somebody's producing this content for you. They also have, if you have a, and it's only 29 bucks a month, I don't have an affiliate code or anything like that, um, but they publish a daily blog for you. So winning plays for buying a home in today's market. The thing you don't want to do, and I'll cover it here in a second, you don't want to be the agent that's only posting about real estate or only posting about a closing or only posted about a just listed. Because even some agents that I thought had it together on social media, I went to their pages and it was all just stuff that who cares? Like, how does it help me, you know, that you're, you're listing homes? I mean, I guess it's, it's helpful to know you're active in your listing homes, but you want it to be more of a, of a content driven strategy. So I highly, highly recommend, um, and they even have something called social graphics here, right? This stuff is just an absolute no brainer. I think, I don't even know what it costs. I think their lowest package is like 29 or $49 a month. Um, but it would cost you a whole lot more than more than that uh, in time and energy. Um, so I pulled up Mark's, but I couldn't find his. Uh, uh, Tammy Woodbury uh, did a training on a production mastermind probably about six months ago, maybe. I think about half her business is from um, social media. So her, her team is called the Clever People. Uh, client testimonials, highly recommend. Um, if you're going to do just listed, I would make them, you know, look, look a little fancy. I think something like that versus just a picture of the house is a little bit boring. Um, posts like this informational posts, you know, 10 tax deductions for re rental properties, client testimonial, client testimonial, you know, Merry Christmas, something fun for, for the holidays, stuff like that. Uh, let me pull up Kirby and Christina. They built a massive business. It started with just the just the two of them. Um, there's a couple things on here. They do a lot of listings. So there's definitely open houses, team birthdays. I like this one. I'm going to give you a framework here. to So it's every fourth or fifth post is about real estate, not every post. So I actually wouldn't recommend, they do a gazillion homes a year. I wouldn't recommend everyone being about real estate, but this one is a really good one. So it's, you know, they did some volunteer event and there was a lesson in it, you know, that take take some life event and turn it into a, a social media post. Um, you know, 6,000 homes sold, that's fun. What's this here? This is, this is cute. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I can't think of this stuff. I'm not this creative. Right. But that's Kirby, the amazing realtor I told you about. He's getting us a house in the West Metro once we win the Super Bowl. So it's Taylor Swift whispering to her Super Bowl champion uh, boyfriend or husband. Are they married? I don't know. Um, so anyway, some more inspiration there. Um, covered Limbird. Um, Amanda does a pretty good job as well. We had her on for for a training. Uh, there was one post on here that I thought she does uh, Facebook lives. So personally, she's probably, I think she shared with us, you know, she's personally on Instagram, but her target demo lives on Facebook. So she wants the people on Facebook, even though she personally likes Instagram. So kind of pick the platform for business wisely. Um, you know, so Valentine's Day. So the give, chocolate giveaway, 
or register for drawing. Um, when you sell your home in a blink, think pink. So giving a check to, to charity, that's fun. Right, so you guys, you guys get the point. I think part of the point here, and Chris Colgan does a really good job. He's he's really good on Instagram and YouTube, uh, but he he publishes a lot of stuff about his local, what's going on in his local market, and he just puts some, you know, uh, 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 to to Kathy's point about the image, you know, he could just post this text here, but a picture with with this, you know, it it jumps out on the page. So same thing here. TikTok eyeing, you know, Herndon for office space. Fairfax teacher wins, you know? So I thought this was really, really cool. And just consistent posts that are, you know, value add about his area. So I would I would bring in the five posts you're going to do, you know, rotate. One is about real estate. One is about some personal development struggle you're going through. One is an area post, a local business post or whatnot. One could be, you know, about your role as a parent or a spouse. Um, and then one can be about a hobby that you're interested in and just rotate those five. And every day you're posting something and it's just the topic of the day. But I really like this. He's just taking a picture. He's putting his team name on it. He's putting a little excerpt here and he's posting it. Really, really good. All right. So that's. I think half the battle is just, and and I'm not a social media expert, so that's why I wanna I wanna uh, open it up to, to to you guys. My encouragement, if you're not getting business consistently from social media, is what if you could only get business from social media? What would you start doing today, and what would you do every day, and how many times a day would you do it? I'm not saying that it's going to be your only your only source of business, but what approach would you take if you could only earn money from real estate through social media and building your, your network and your database on, on Facebook or whatever platform you're going to build it on. And then I'll, I'm going to take you through a process of committing to a 31 day process, but how many times a day would you post if everything depended on you being active on social media? Right. So, so that's kind of the mindset I want, I want us to have here. Most of you probably have a story about something you did on social media that generated business and you just don't do it consistently enough. So I'm going to open up and you guys can get in the chat if you want to share it in the chat. Um, but also I just want you guys to unmute yourself and what are the things you've been doing that have been working on social media to generate business? They could be giveaways, they could be content posts, they could be I'm messaging, you know, I'm using Facebook Messenger to reach out to clients that interact with my content. Um, what are the things you guys are doing? Yeah, that's a really good uh, point. So Kathy made, th that's amazing. So instead of just posting a generic, like just listed and you talk about the house, it's almost like story brand, like Donald Miller story brand, like these clients have this situation, you know, tell the story about how you're guiding them through the process and they are the center of attention. It's not about the house necessarily. I, I really like that. Uh, one of the most engaging things on social media is to have an account that con connects with people. It means a mix of content, not only business, of, for sure. People connect with people, mix personal posts, funny posts, and business posts. Yeah, what... what um. What platform is it that has the funny stuff about real estate agents? There's like a specific broke social... agent. Is it broke agent? Yes. And is it um is that content like I see posts like that? Is it on Facebook or um I'm sure they're on Facebook, yes. I know they're on Instagram for sure, the broke agent. All right, I'm gonna look it up. You know, you could just grab you can repost stuff. Uh, the broke agent, 183,000 followers. While you're looking that up, um, there's a few things that I think would be helpful as you guys are kind of determining what your social media pillar of your business can look like. So sometimes it's hard to decide what platform to be on, right? Do I have to post on every single one of them? Do I have to 
um, you know, post every day? Do I have to post multiple times a day? Like what's the magic key? And the funny thing about social media and algorithms is that they constantly change it, right? <laughs> so whatever makes sense for them to make the most money, just like us in business, is how the algorithm is going to change and work. And so the, the best thing that I think you can start to think of, I, I think of it in stages. So number one, what is the purpose of you posting? So is it to gain more clients? Is it to tell clients how you work? Is it to show a more humanistic side of you? Is it all of those things? So once you've determined like the background of why you're posting, then determine what your king platform is going to be. So because there's so many platforms and some people hit it big on TikTok and some people hit it big on Instagram and, you know, et cetera, et cetera pick a platform. It's just like a CRM. You would never run five CRMs and try to like stay on top of all of them. And that's why sharing is beautiful. Content scheduling is beautiful because if you are posting on other platforms, make one your king because each of them are going to have a little bit of a different strategy, right? Instagram, Facebook, was created to be more social, to put people in groups, to connect people. Then Instagram came along and that was supposed to all be about photos and young people wanted old people off of Facebook and anyone can, age 23 was considered old, right? So they're like, get off. So you stay on Facebook, we're going to Instagram. Then TikTok came because people couldn't even grasp four minutes of content. It had to be super quick and cut and punchy and different angles and things like that. So that's why it's so important to pick a king platform because how you work and how you like to edit or not edit or what you like to say, that's what you want to design your content for and then repost to the other ones. And then if you get better and better or have people to help you like a VA, then go ahead and post to other you can have them do posting for you and cut up video different ways and, and all those kinds of things. But I know for me, at first I was trying to like post on all these different platforms and I was, I wasn't gaining a lot of traction on any of them, even when I became consistent. So just think of a King platform, who you're talking to, who, where most of your people are, um, you know, or if you're going to a different platform, understand what the main benefits of that platform are. Then I think the next one is pillars for your content. So like Lars said, there is production, there is working with you, like even client testimonials where they're the hero, like story brand, like he mentioned, there's, Hey, I'm a human outside of real estate. This is also things that are important to me or my kids or my family. Um, so there's those types of things within your, within your content and then determining the type that you're going to do. So there's video, there's face to camera, there's green screen. There is, um, you know, putting someone else on your video. There's carousels, there's all these kinds. And that's what can really sort of get us caught up in. But again, determining how you want to do it is best for who's going to respond to you because that's who you're going to attract. So taking a little bit of time up front to figure out some of that, I think takes out the anxiety of, am I doing it right? Uh oh, I need to switch to this platform. Oh my gosh, that guy's like so big on TikTok. I should have been on TikTok. Now he's selling a bunch of homes. Well, you have to read between the lines. Is it that? He's, you know, attracting multiple people because he understands who he helps and why he helps them and how he does it best or she, um, the platform makes a difference because they're really taking time to understand what it goes well on that type of platform. And then last thing I think is super important is like Lars said, he's going to introduce the 31 and done, but when you've posted consistently, whatever that might be. So maybe it is only a couple times a week. That's okay too, but you need to read your analytics. So once you've read your analytics, 
after 30 days of consistency, whatever that looks like, now you're going to understand what people are responding to. So oddly enough, right now in my analytics, people are responding to motivational posts, which are honestly just a placeholder because there's nothing. I don't know why this keeps giving me a thumbs up. I'm sorry. But anyway, motivational posts are, are performing better for me right now, which is weird to me. So they don't really want to hear from me or my thoughts. But if I put up a quote from someone, darn it, it's going to get some engagement. But that's where I'm saying when you read your analytics, you kind of understand what's working at the time, or maybe it's the quote that is, it's, it's the meaning behind the quote. So now I know what kind of content I could shoot something similar to a quote like that. So I know that's probably deeper, but if you know me, I'm just kind of a systems person. And so those are the things that I think of when trying to make it a true pillar of business. Stacy, what do you, what do you see the, the, cause I know you've taught on this, the, for folks that don't integrate social into their business, what's the biggest reason why, and how do they overcome it? I know some of the, what you said just kind of feeds into that, but is it, they're afraid of what they look like or sound like, or they can't figure out like they're too busy or what are the things that trips, trips people up from getting after this? Yeah. I even know for myself, like I'll think, oh my gosh, my hair looks stupid today. <laughs> or like, oh, I have nothing to say. What would I say? I don't even know. And I think sometimes the, the most anxiety comes from consuming first instead of creating first. So if you're, if you're watching everybody else's content, if you think about your own feed, it's probably filled with realtors or similar to you because that's who you follow. So then when you go to create content, you're like, well, that's already been said. Oh, I mean, I'd be copying exactly what they're doing. So you have to also remember that sometimes you're consuming all the stuff that you want to create. So look outside of that and then gain inspiration from that. So I actually take on Instagram and you can do this on any platform, but I'll, I, you know how you can save posts, right? So I put them in a folder on my saved posts as video ideas. Then when I just feel like I don't know what to do or what to shoot or what I could talk about, or I'm not feeling like it, that's a good way for me to, without getting caught up in the scroll of ideas to sort of inspire me to shoot a video about something. Um, and, and again, it's just like doing anything. If, you know, if you're not, if you're not sure where to start, just start. And maybe it is just things like putting out a post or putting up homes for sale or, um, whatever it might be, just find something and commit to something so easy that you would feel ridiculous not doing it. So maybe it's post one time a week. Like it sounds crazy. Like, oh, okay. I'm really going to get traction. Well, you're not getting any traction when you post zero. So one at least is something start small and then go from there. And look, only 20% of the people are going to see your content anyway. So you could look ridiculous and no one else is going to think you look ridiculous or sound ridiculous. They're too busy scrolling. So, mm -hmm. so little of what we put so much thought into really doesn't, you know, go out there. Also, then once you get content that you liked a month later, share it again. Like that's how people sometimes will go viral with different things is because they'll share it again. Mm. Awesome. 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 Chris, what do you got to share? I was going to call on you at some point. Where are you? Oh, there you yeah. Go. Um, just to echo Stacy, like, uh, some of my best stuff was like, in my opinion, the sloppiest videos I ever did. And like, you know, I was super proud of this one video and the topic and I really thought it out and we put all these graphics in and it got like, for, you know, 40 views. And then this one, I just like turned my camera around and it was a bad hair day. And I was like, fumbling all my words and I got like 1500 views. So like, I think going down the rabbit hole of like analyzing before you make content is just, it's a death trap. So like just make anything. And if you're making, if you're not doing much consistently, like my, 
my best lead generators are just walking through a property on selfie like and make a reel about it and so you're under 90 seconds and you just like fly through the home i don't remember every detail of the home i might have missed something but like I, I'm just being real conversational. Hey, you know, I'm near downtown today and here's this house and it's a crazy good deal because we barely ever see homes in this price range. Like multiple clients then reach out and just say, Hey, you, you shot, you posted that one about old town. Like what's, what's going on with that? Like, tell me more, you know? So that's, that's just been like the really low hanging fruit is just walk properties. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Richard posted, uh, I think it was Richard posted a book. Um, that I want to pull pull up here. And actually, Joe, uh, one of our members, Joe, uh, called me out on this yesterday, and Stacy's going to appreciate this. Um, Joe asked a question on our Mindset Monday call. He's like, okay, Lars, I'm going to ask you a question, and do not tell me to just do it. <laughs> and Stacy knows, like, the answer is just do it. And for a lot of people, that is not the answer. For a lot of people, this is like a crazy, crazy amount of fear. And uh, so I've not read this book, but for some of you, you know, understanding like why why the fear exists. So I don't know if anyone else has read this book, but something like this, and Stacy just said it, start. I love the title, Punch Fear in the Face, Escape Average and Do Work That Matters. Um, and I love the fact that it's an older book, you know, so it's 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 not like the the latest and greatest, but, and flip the switch from average to awesome. So for, for for some of us, you know, it, it is um it is just getting getting out of our own way and just doing something, you know, that makes us a little uncomfortable. Um and and it is uh, I forget who who did this. It was I think it was like uh bomb bomb, the the video email marketing company. They in one of their trainings, they highlighted the most like awkward um it was an older couple couple and they were trying to do their first bomb bomb and they were like laughing and giggling and like oh hit the start button you know and then like okay it's recording jimmy it's jimmy it's recording and none of it was scripted and but it was like wildly you know viewed and forwarded and um versus like you're trying to get it perfect you know and i i like facebook live for that reason you know, when I, when I produce anything, if, if I'm doing it live, it's live. If I fumble and I'm like, oh shoot, like, what was that word? And then, but you'd never like try to go on YouTube and you have an editor waiting for and like clip out that piece. And, you know, so for, for some of you that want to get into some of this, it's like, just, just do a live a few times a week and have an opinion about something or share a failure or a win or, you know, interested on in what your thoughts are. Have you been over to Chris's point? Have you seen this new development or have you gone to this business that just opened up, right? Try not to overthink it too, too much. Um, the site that I was thinking about, I'm going to share both of them here, but the site that I was thinking about in terms of just getting some, um, some easy stuff, it was the light, it, the broke agent is a similar site, but someone mentioned it was the lighter, the lighter side of real estate. You know, so you can just go through here and, you know, and I've seen these posts on people's pages, um, nine sexy things you can say to your significant other in the mood on Valentine's Day, if they're a real estate agent, you know, um, so just forward some of that and people are like, oh, that's, you know, it's funny. Um, stop being so reasonable, take risks, switch careers, you know, go skydiving, Um so this is just stuff that you can be inspired by and then just commit, you know, to some, some sort of cadence that you're, that you're going to commit to. Uh, all right. So let me go back to the, to the comments here. Uh, and then I want to definitely, before we head out, I want to go through, uh, and just give you guys a little bit of a challenge and then hopefully you guys, uh, take us up on it. Lars, uh, can I say a few things? hundred percent you can. I'm going to spotlight okay, you. So I've been a maniac on Facebook for forever because my target market is there. The money pot is in Facebook. They're not necessarily, not necessarily my target market is on Instagram. I don't get Instagram. I get Facebook. Well, at least I thought I did till yesterday um, when I learned about uh, Chatbot Builder, which just threw everything in the uh, monkey wrench, but that's okay. 
because I'm I'm doing this um, YouTube channel where I'm interviewing all these people that know all this different tech stuff. And as I'm interviewing them, I'm learning new tools like crazy. So I have done my personal page versus a business page on all those different ways that you were saying. I've got my granddaughter in there. You see me uh, serving at church, doing parking duty out in the rain, stuff like that. Uh, you see me at classic car things because that's my thing. And the whole thing was in addition to the houses that I'm selling whatsoever, because I want them to see the whole picture because I want them to see me. They want to do business with me um, because of how I am. Right. So yesterday when I'm interviewing her, uh, she said she does everything on a business page. I said, well, no one goes to a business page. You know, you got to pay to get everybody over there. And I didn't have the budget to go over there. Right. So that's why I focused and I've got six, 7,000 people on my personal page. And she goes, with this chatbot builder AI, huh, it is a funnel. It is like a mini chat, if you know that, for Instagram, mm -hmm. except it's on steroids a thousand percent better. So you can start to capture uh, all kinds of business on your business page. I said, well, how do you build the business page up? And she said, content, content, content was the trick. So you can invite people to your business page. So I'm going to start doing that to start building up the business page. But I'm going to bring that little chatbot builder in there because it answers the questions for me like on an evergreen format, meaning I don't have to be there, but you teach it how to do it. So that sounds all complicated and maybe it is. But um, if you see, like, there's my needle in a haystack one because I'm looking for that property. Um, so that's my business page I think you're on. Uh, is it? Yep. My personal page is just Kathy Kloss Burns, C-L-O-S-S. C-L-O-S-S. -S. C -L -O -S -S. Oh, C-L-O-S-S. There I am. We may not be friends. Oh, my God. We are not. What the hell? Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not, I'm none of those people. Where, how could you not come up though? I typed in your whole name. I don't know. Because I got a lot of people. Yeah, you don't have room. You don't have room for me in there. But is it uh, Cassie Kloss? Cassie Kathy Kloss Burns. Oh, okay. And um, uh, I just started sharing my regular posts over to my business page because I, I started learning this. So, um, you know, different things. These are interviews with different people, how I would search for stuff. Just business tips uh, on I there. think stuff like uh, this is really good too. Like, you know, it's a national, so you can grab something off like Keeping Current Matters and just make it relevant for your city or wherever you, you got this, but you can make it, like bring it, bring it to the city. And and how I did that, there was a picture, there was an article that was in like a news feed that was talking all about how it was, uh, you know, where was everybody moving from? And I thought, I'm not posting the article with all the ads. I grabbed the picture. I said where it was coming from. And I just, I ex extracted the content that I wanted for it. And that picture grabbed a lot. And then uh, you know, you put your hashtags in because I want to keep drawing them to me. Your hashtags are a big deal. But I'm going to learn this chatbot a uh, chatbot builder AI because it didn't sound difficult. I don't know what it costs. That's the one missing piece. But I want to build that business page where I start bringing them to me without having to do the ads necessarily. And a lot of what I do is social media. And I'll tell you, my bet one of my best videos was when I was doing a Facebook Live at an open house, and I'm out there saying, hey, come on out. And I go, oh, my God, I can't remember the address. I don't even know the name of the street I'm on. And people, because I was live, were responding in the live, oh, you're on this street. And one looked it up and said, here's your address. And I'm like, we're all laughing and making that kind of activity happen. It garnered so much conversation uh, that... You know, that's what you want. You And anytime you do a live versus a regular video, the Facebook algorithms love it. So they're going to push people to you. They're going to send out people that follow you. Or they're going to say, hey, Kathy's live. You've probably seen it on your phone. And so you're going to go, what's Kathy talking about? You know. Yeah. Awesome. 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 And there, there is something about Kathy's approach and Stacy's approach and 
like nobody's an expert on any of this stuff, but they're, they're in the game. Right. And they're willing to get uncomfortable and put themselves out there and just commit, commit to doing it. Uh, right. Let me read a few more comments. Then I'm, I want to give you guys a bit of a challenge. Uh, hopefully you guys will accept it. Uh, Chrissy says I'm getting two to three uh, times more views with videos or anything with me talking into the camera. People want to see people. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And then, uh, Derek posted some, uh, some Valentine's day. Um, and you can ask chat GPT anything, you know, you know, I want to, I'm a real estate agent, you know, and I want to create a post, a funny post about, Valentine's Day. Give me some ideas. Um, yeah. So, and then Derek posted uh, a guy on Instagram that, you know, talking about having confidence on social media. So really, really good. And like anytime you're stuck on something, you know, just go to YouTube and type it in, say like, uh, you know, conquering, overcoming fear on social media. And then you'll find like legit people that can help you overcome that you know that's that's what i do with pretty much everything all right let me go through the 31 and done challenge here um let me see here um i'm gonna share my screen i may go through some of these uh slides here just to stay on point give me a split second and then any other chat any other comments get them in the chat uh, or just unmute yourself. Let me share my screen. All right. So I'm not going to go through all this, but uh, if uh, Annalise or Jessica, if you guys can can uh, throw this 31 and done challenge, uh, and it could be going live every day for 31 days. It could be posting or going live, a combination of both. Um, I, I would love for you guys to commit. If you're just not on social media, just pick one, your personal Facebook profile. If you don't get over complicated about, I need to start this or this, or TikTok is trending, or just go to where you use more naturally so you don't have to learn the tech, right? And this is just gonna get you in a habit. And, and at least once a day, I want you guys to post, either create a post, this is truly video. So for if you really wanna get out of your comfort zone, you know, just hit, Facebook Live on your personal. I saw a question about personal or business. Just start with your personal to start. And in 31 days, you'll cycle through, you'll give like five real estate related. So you'll pick your pillars, like Stacy said. One is gonna be real estate. One is gonna be like a mindset or personal development, like Stacy said. One is going to be a local business or you know development. You know, well, I guess that that's real estate. So that would cut count as real estate. Um, well, not not the local business. So that would be different. Um, one could be like just something vulnerable and personal, like about your role as a parent or your role as a, a spouse or a difficult thing you're going through, right? I think more of that is needed, honestly, because everyone puts on, you know, you're looking at people's outsides when you're comparing them to your insides is kind of the expression. So I think the more vulnerable, the better. And then one, I guess the fifth one could be, you could just be sharing some some other content that inspired you, you know, like be a sharer of content. So this sheet here will give you some ideas, you know, and this is picking up Facebook, your phone on Facebook, hit the live button, give it a title and just go live. And you're basically keeping it simple. So if one of the topics, you know, um, uh, decided to start um, people most. So, you know, tell people about the moment you decided to start in real estate, right? So you basically just think about it for a second, maybe jot a few notes and you have generally the idea um, and you're just going to go live and you're going to talk about that topic for two or three minutes. Uh, it's not, don't overthink it, you know, Hey, I've been in, you know, I've been in real estate for 17 years. You know, I left a corporate job, you know, and the inspiration for getting into this crazy industry was that I wanted freedoms for my family that I didn't have, you know, when I was in a corporate job, it didn't quite work out that way. Cause I had no freedom, you know, my first few years in real estate. Um, but I figured out a few things and, you know, whatever, right. It's going to be your story. It's in two to three minutes, something that just lets them into your world that allows them to see 
you on a more regular basis. Um, and I think Kathy mentioned it, you know, the, the, the live is what will feed it to more people, you know, so it, at best 20%, I don't even think it's that. I think they, depending on the platform, I think they only show it to like 40 people to see if there's any engagement. So if you have like 5,000 friends, all 5,000 friends are not going to see it. You know, Facebook tests it to a small part of your your community. And if there's interaction, then they'll open it up to more. If, it, if it's not even worth watching, they're not going to show it to anybody. So your fear of people seeing you is like unfounded most of the time. Um, and so let me let me let me just go through uh, some of this here. So I give you guys a little bit of context. The reason we do video is it's just, a uh, you know, use any social platform. It's just a massive time multiplier, you know, so you could do you could spend two to three minutes doing a Facebook live at an open house Um talking about how to set up for the open house was a bit of a crap show. It's raining today. You know, I'm here. This house is amazing. You know, if you're in the area, stop by. Uh, and and that could get viewed a hundred times, right? There's no other way to talk to a hundred people, you know, so it's just this massive time multiplier. One thing I will say, I'll cover it, kind of covered it. You don't want to be real estate all the time. I think that's super boring. Everyone knows that you're a real estate agent, you know, there's a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Gary Vaynerchuk. I really don't personally care for Gary Vaynerchuk, but that book is really good. The jabs are the, you know, the con, the, the, not the thing you're trying to let them know you're an expert in. So the jabs are the things that's not about real estate. And the right hook is like, hey, the market's shifting. You know, some of you may be contemplating a sale in the spring. You know, I've got a, a free home evaluation tool. If you guys want it, just send me a private message. There's like zero obligation whatsoever, but it will give you a pretty tight range of what your home is worth. You know, so just DM me if, if you want to get access to the tool. That's like a right hook, direct offer to people, you know, do it on a Facebook live, but it's a direct offer. So don't, don't be right hooking all the time. And when you're shooting the video, Stacy's really good at this, um, just act like you're talking to a friend, like someone that you're not, you're not afraid to talk to. You know, I'm not the best on video, but I have no fear. I don't even know this topic very well, but I have no fear about talking to all of you because I really consider you guys like my people. I'm here to help you. All of you guys know the information. I don't care if I mess up or I say something stupid or because you guys are my friends, right? So bring that same attitude when you're hitting the, 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 the go live button. Um, and embrace imperfection. People are craving it. You know, done are the days where everyone looks perfect and, and you know, that you don't have to be that person. You know, if you're having a, I don't ever see Stacy have a bad hair day, but if you're having a bad hair day, you know, just go on. Like how amazing would it be? Um, Stacy, this is a challenge for you. If you had the worst hair day ever, like your hair was all over the place and you were like, guys, I had to get this done today, but I didn't have time to do my hair. And like your dog is next to you, and your dog's having a bad hair day, and you're like, kids are screaming in the background. Promise that would be the best live that you could ever do. But you know what I mean? But nobody really does that. Um, but just think about that, like how entertaining it would be. Like Seth and Stacy just got in a fight, and the kids are like, have like ripped doors off, and the dog, like Stacy's just crying holding the dog. You know, like, guys, I just needed to talk to you today. Um, you guys get my point. Just embrace uh, imperfection. You guys have heard me tell this story before. My wife took a picture of me sleeping with my mouth open on a plane. The shirt that I'm wearing is I'd never dream I'd grow up to be the world's hottest husband, but here I am crushing it. And the first thing I told her when she took this picture, first thing, do not post that on Facebook. And I was pissed for some reason, like she was going to post it on Facebook. Um, but then I, I ran an ad around this middle picture and it, it, it did really, really well. And then just, just, just hit record. Don't overthink it. I hope a lot of you take this challenge and just commit to just going live and just following that five point cadence, every fifth one, you know, it could be that you take the, you know, Stacy does the real estate market, uh, updates once a month, your five or six content pieces about real estate could be literally printing out one of the slides 
you know, that Stacy goes through and say, Hey guys, you know, I just learned this this week that, you know, blah, blah, blah about interest rates or the Fed rate cuts or whatever and the impact on real estate. And you guys can see, you know, on this piece of paper and you're holding the piece of paper, you know, well, I guess you can't do it. You'd have to, you wouldn't have two hands, but um, just hit record and just commit to doing something, you know, or if you're better behind a, a on a desk, you can bring up something like that on, you know, you can use StreamYard or you can go Facebook Live is a little bit wonky like the actual interface, it's almost easier to use like Zoom and go to Facebook Live than um, unless they've made it better. Stacey, have, you, has, have they made that interface? It still sucks, right? You know, I haven't used it for so long because it did suck, <laughs> so I'm not even sure. Yeah, so so I, I but either way, I, I use StreamYard. It's a paid service, but it's like super eloquent. Like it's really, really good. Um, let me see. I want to take you. Uh, so let's just talk about the the challenge. The only thing on 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 technology, every one of you, if you had a phone and you had Facebook, you could do a Facebook Live. It is overwhelming to think of someone like let's take Stacy for example. If you go look at her content, she's been doing it for a long time. She has someone that's slicing and dicing it. She's been, you know, on stages and she's been a real estate coach and you know, and she's, she's more polished and has a little bit, and she's on all the platforms. You're not going to be on all the platforms to start, right? So pick one. If Facebook is your comfort zone or if Instagram is your comfort zone, just get in the habit of doing it. Um, that's what keeps people like, they think they have to go YouTube, you know, and thumbnails and the algorithm. And like, that's not the game that we want to play for the next 31 days. We just want to get in the habit around it. Um, and this is actually from Seinfeld. He, he, um, what was his thing? It was, uh, don't break the chain. So, you know, the reason he, I think he wrote a joke every day or something like that. That's how he got to become such a good comedian. So the, the story goes like he, he just wasn't going to break the chain. You know, he was going to create content or create a joke every day and work a new joke into his, you know, into his routine and just never give up on, on that part of the process. So um, this sheet is dropped in the chat for you guys. I hope it's inspiration. It doesn't have to be any topic on here. It can just be, just do it, you know, a day at a time and realize that there's five themes that you're going to cover, you know, go to the lighter side of real estate or the broke agent. That could be one out of the five. Go to another agent that inspires you, their stuff and, and, maybe rip off one of their ideas. That's one of your five. Share something personal that nobody knows about you or struggle you're going through without maybe being specific. Um, that could be one of your one of the, your things. Um, and just don't, or a book you're reading, right? In the course of 31 days, what if you gave like four recommendations of, you just held up the book, you know? Man, I read this awesome book, you know, Buy Back Your Time. Highly recommended for any business owners. Um, you know, the what probably one of my best takeaways was chapter three, you know, really powerful. It went through the only three trades uh, that matter, you know, talking about how do you make, you know, disconnect time and money. If anyone wants to meet up and, and you're a business owner, you want to chat about this book and maybe your takeaways, just private message me, you know, and, and, and let's meet up, maybe do a mini mastermind, right? So that, so that could be one. So th there's like no, no way you can't come up with topics to talk about. Um, all right, guys, that's it. I know we're over time here. So I want to, uh, I want to, uh, honor our time block. Hopefully this was great. Stacy. I appreciate you jumping in, uh, and bringing a little bit more elegance to my presentation as always the better half, my better business half. Uh, and we'll talk to you guys soon next week. What do we got next week? You're up next week, right? Stacy? real estate, real estate yep. market update. Yeah. yeah. So this will fit in perfect. So next week you come to Stacy's, you'll get all the content you need to be able to use what she presents ne next week in this challenge. So we'll see you guys next week. Much love and respect. Be good. Bye-bye.